Hello, welcome to another edition of Issues with G-Day. Here we talk about actions and inactions of those who shape our political and national landscape and how these impact us positively or otherwise. I'm Ibrahim Shita. Today on our special edition of Issues with G-Day, we'll begin by doing an overview of Nigeria as it clocks 63 years, the journey so far. Also, police review how Moba died, name prime suspect. And later on the show, article says, no retreat, no surrender on Tinubu's academic record. In the course of the program, we'll take your questions. But first, subscribe to our YouTube channel and drop your questions in the comment section. It's important to mention that we can only read comments whose names are clear and are about, to, uh, are about the issues discussed. There are selected few from among our viewers who would make live contributions on today's edition. However, we'll implore that our contributions are straight to the point and on the issues discussed. I have joining me via Zoom, the maestro himself, Babajide Koladio Tutoju. It's good to see you again, BKO. Now, let me begin by looking at uh, Nigeria's, you know, celebrating uh, 63 years of independence. You know, we celebrated it on the 1st of October 2023, and Nigerians did that with mixed reactions. Uh, many lamented, uh, many lamented, on the journey so far and situation of the country at present something or something that the country isn't faring too badly in comparison to others as they believe they're saying no pain no gain where do you think nigeria is are there anything or anything to be thankful or hopeful for Bikil? in terms of electricity supply we are far away from where uh, we should be and frankly we need to work hard then, of, of course, uh, democracy, yes, we've made uh, progress in terms of strengthening the hand of our democracy, but we have to admit that there is a lot that is left uh, to be done, especially in the area of uh, uh, delivering good elections, elections that we can hold up as been among the best not just in our continent but beyond uh, the continent of africa uh, our politics needs to be better there's a lot of money politics going on in our country there are, there are many people who believe that the, that the rest of us um, are canon for us politically they believe that they can they can use us and dump us uh, the way they like the people Democracy has to properly put power in the hands of the people, such that our our uh, the people in government will feel that if they do not work for the people, they will be sent packing. But where people are able to rig elections, where they are able to manipulate elections, where the the, the voters cannot have that power, and we want to see the voters have that power. So in the area of democracy, yes. We made progress um, many years of unbroken democracy since 1999. Unbroken democracy, we've been able to keep the military in their barracks, but we need to improve in the area of um, uh, the quality, in terms of the quality of our elections. We need elections that our people will generally uh, be proud of. And then, of course, uh, insecurity. Insecurity is a lot worse in today's Nigeria. Insecurity became a big problem in our country after the Civil War because there was no real uh, mop-up of weapons that were used during the Civil War. So a lot of people who had guns decided to use the guns to rob their uh, countrymen and women and armed robbery uh, became rampant after the Civil War, especially uh, robbery on the highways you know so we are battling with boko haram we are battling with insurgency in the southeast people demanding for a country of their own these are serious security issues that we have and if you keep having security issues it's going to hamper productivity and it's going to um, make it difficult for us to attain real economic growth so we have to uh, do better to stimulate economic growth and diversify our economy. We need to invest in social and human 
uh, capital development. You know, and prioritize, as I said earlier, power. Of course, unemployment is so high in our country. We need to do something urgently about that. So if you ask me, Nigeria has made a bit of progress, but there is still a lot of work to be done. And if I were to give Nigeria a pass mark, I would, be, I would just, if I were to give Nigeria uh, it was called Nigeria in terms of what we have achieved uh, 63 years. I will just cause 55 percent, just 55 uh, percent. Uh, I believe that the best of our country has not been seen. There is a lot uh, for us to do in the coming years, and every Nigerian must play his part. Every patriotic Nigerian has to play its part. Nigeria can be a much greater nation than it is today. Our prayer is that God will give us um, selfless leaders because a lot of our leaders are selfish. You know, they are just looking for what they can, the kind of money that they can make off our country. A good number of people, ministers and the rest of them, they see Nigeria as a buffet. And... They are looking for how to cut their slice of the national cake. Uh, they, are, they, they do not have um, any real concern for uh, the ordinary Nigerians. But this is bad. We need leaders that are truly selfless, not leaders who will be preoccupied with how much they can steal uh, when given the opportunity. The opportunity to serve the people. Right, Biko. Right, so um, let's um, turn to the issue of Mobad. You know, Nigerians have been pointing, accusing fingers at um, Naira Mali, some Larry and all, some others, over the death of Mobad. But recently, the Nigeria Police Force had named Ms. Feishayo Ogidengbe, uh, the auxiliary nurse who administered an injection of Mobad as a prime suspect of his, of his death, even though the result of the autopsy carried out on him is still pending. What's your reading of this latest development? This whole thing is uh, broken into different parts. And the police are conducting extensive investigation. I am always amazed at the way Nigerians jump to conclusions. There is a lot of illiteracy in the way our people read issues. Now, the police have uh, described Feisha Ogedengbe, the auxiliary nurse who administered three different injections on uh, on Obad. Clearly, this that nurse is a quack. He shouldn't be that kind of person that will be brought in to treat Obad. Mistakes have been made. Mobad should have been taken to the hospital so that if his uh, situation deteriorates, the health caregivers in the hospital will know what to do. The idea of bringing someone inside the house, bringing someone to the uh, musician's house to treat the musician is a terrible thing. And in this modern age and time, I do not expect people to be doing that. Mobad and his friends did not handle his situation the right way. What is the point? I mean, get them to take you to a proper hospital not to bring in um, a, a quack somebody with little or no training to come and give you injection huh? paracetamol mixed with water police found paracetamol mixed with water um, in this house what was that for so clearly an overdose of the tetanus uh, uh, injection had been administered on him. If you watch this program last week, I talked about it, that the, the, the nurse who administered the anti-tetanus uh, injection on her, on him, had um, has got a lot of explanation to do. And I'm happy that the police 
are already on it. Three injections she administered, uh, tetanoid, toxoid, paracetamol, and cetrazone. And then he began to vomit immediately. Um, these injections were, were administered and he started having uh, goosebumps. He was clearly in distress at that time. By the time they uh, took him to hospital, by the time they arrived at a proper hospital, he was already gone. He was already gone. So clearly mistakes were made in the way his matter uh, was uh, handled. And then um, the, his friend, who claimed that um, he was surprised that Mubad's wife reported him to the police and said uh, he was a suspect. At the time, oh, before, before he was saying that issue, to I, I the press, myself, like, not he never that admitted that. that they had uh, a fight during which Mubad was injured. He never admitted. So I'm sure that Mobad told his wife before his death that he had a, 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 a quarrel with uh, his friend and that um, he was injured during the scuffle. That was why Mobad's wife actually felt that the police should arrest uh, his friend uh, for the injury that uh, he suffered. If not for that injury, there will have been no need in the first place to take the anti tetanus injection. And perhaps he could still be alive. So for the young man to say that uh, he was not, that he was surprised, uh, that he was the, uh, uh, he was the one taking care of him after he left uh, Naramali's after I left our analyst uh, apartment and that his mother was the one feeding him. But you didn't confess to us that both of you exchanged blows. And that in the process, Mobad was injured. And Mobad's injury was life-threatening because uh, it, it was said to have punched the uh, uh, car mirror, the mirror of a car that they even hired. And in the process, he injured himself and the pain was severe. So he has a case uh, to answer there. On the issue of Naramali, yes, Naramali and uh, Samlari Sam were not in Nigeria on the day Mubad died. But the police have said that both men have a case to answer for bullying and assault the police have said that they have evidence of cyber bullying they have evidence of of uh, assault by both naramali and uh, uh samilari both of them police said they have evidence that they assaulted mobad those videos are flying all over the place so the police must have seen those videos and even some videos that the rest of us have not seen. So, in spite of the arrest of this uh, uh, nurse, quack, this quack of a nurse, Naramali is not off the hook yet. The police will be filing charges for cyberbullying and for assault. They've already told us. So, those who are saying that Nigerians may uh, have to apologize to Naramali, they are, they are in fact very stupid. You do apology for what? The police have evidence that he bullied him. They have evidence that Naramali beat him up, Naramali assaulted him, or got his, uh, his aides to assault him. There is a video of Mobad bleeding on the neck in front of Nairamali's house. So, and there's a video of uh, uh, Samilari storming a video shoot involving um, um, 
Mobad and uh, Zlatan Ibile. So there is no doubt that all of this put together, that's Prime Boy, Prime Boy, that is uh, the name of uh, Naramali's friend who fought him, the one that Naramali's wife uh, told the police that she suspected that uh, he was the one who killed, uh, I mean, Mobad's friend, Mobad's friend, Mobad's wife told the police that she suspected that Prime Boy killed Naramali. And I'm saying that um, Prime Boy killed Mo, uh, Mobad. And I'm saying that Mobad could have told his wife that they exchanged blows after the um, the concert in the uh, Ikorodu. And for that reason, the woman must have felt that, oh, that Prime Boy ha had a hand in uh, Mobad's killing. But Prime Boy did not confess to the media that he exchanged blows with his friend. He did not confess that it was in the course of the fight that his friend, the late Mobad, uh, suffered life-threatening injuries. He took the investigation of the police to discover that, just the same way that the police have told us that they have discovered uh, that both Samlari and uh, Nairamali actually bullied and assaulted um, uh, the late Mobad. So we leave the police to do their work, but different people risk going to jail over this matter. The, uh, the boy uh, popularly known as uh, Spending, uh, the, um, what's his real name? Ayobami Sodik, alias Pending, was the one who brought the nurse, the, the auxiliary nurse, to uh, Mobad's house, where she was, uh, uh, where um, she administered those three injections that proved fatal uh, to the talented musician. So different people different charges will happen so this is the way i see it 26 persons were interrogated but the police have arrested five persons and i can say now that each of these five persons would be charged recording to court, in progress will be charged to court and um, um risk going to jail if uh, if if found guilty so the, uh, this is the thing there will be different charges for each of those uh, five persons maybe naramali and um, naramali and samlari they've already been taken to court and uh, uh, placed uh, in detention for 20, 21 days you know uh, accused of uh, cyber bullying and assault the, the others would also uh, be charged to court for conspiracy to murder uh, and all that. Because why would you bring a nurse into uh, uh, an auxiliary nurse, somebody without training or sufficient training to come and give three different injections? Why would you do that? The right thing would have been to take him to the hospital. So these guys all played their part in ensuring that we lost these talented young musicians. He too, he too made mistakes in his life. And in life, we have to be careful about the people that we surround ourselves with. Because if you surround yourself with the wrong people, it could eventually cost you, cost you your life. So these are, uh, um, Mobad made mistakes, but at this point, we can't be blaming the dead. His friends, who should have done their best to keep him alive, who contributed to his untimely death, they too will face the long arm of the law. That's the way it is. Uh, by the time the uh, autopsy report is out, perhaps there will be a new twist to this matter. But at this stage, we are just uh, watching the police and hoping that the police will do... Um, yeah. Will, will, will complete the job that they have started. 
Right. A interesting stuff. Right. So um, we will definitely um, look at how we can bring in uh, some of our... We're having issues for some people joining in, but we already have Nicolas Gukop, who um, is on the Zoom call. And also we have um, Harry's iPhone. But Harry, Harry, if you can hear me, it's better you turn on, a, turn on your video uh, so we can um, have you make your contribution to, uh, to the show. But while we have Harry, um, you know, turning on his video... Let's um, take Nicholas Gukob. N Nicholas, would you like to unmute and make your contribution? If it's uh, maybe in form of a comment or question, or we we'll prefer that you uh, ask question as regards the more bad issues before we proceed to our next um, topic. Unmute, please. Thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, Nicholas, you are still muted. C could you unmute? I've asked you to unmute. Yeah, I'm, 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 I've unmuted. Right, go ahead, please. Okay. Can you hear me, please? Can you hear me? Carry on, we can hear you. Carry on, we can hear you. Okay, uh, okay uh, I think, uh, I think uh, uh, Wawajiri has said a lot about this, and I think... Any question that anyone needs to ask would have been answered by most of his comments. But what I will want to say regarding the mobile is that one very important thing Baba Jiria says, we should be careful with the kind of people we surround ourselves. Because as from the case, we can see that it's the people that are around him that caused the death. So I also want to join that line with Baba Jiria, say that we should be very careful with the people that we join, uh, we hang around. Thank you very much. Interesting. Thank you, Harry. Interesting. And, uh, you want me to talk about the Nigeria 63? Yeah, you, you can. You can. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, also, Babaji there has said a lot, but my angle is I want to look at the educational sector how we have fared in the last 63 years. Because if you look at it, uh, our tertiary institution, primary, secondary, and tertiary are not in the state that they are supposed to be after 63 years of independence. If you compare with other countries, uh, I don't know, maybe we can speak with the government to see how they can revive our educational system. Recording stop. All the remuneration of the lecturers. And if we allow that to continue, we may wake up one day to see that we don't even have uh, lecturers to train our children. So I think the government should do something urgently on the educational sector. I can I can tell you from 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 that we will be surprised to hear that the hazard allowance of a Nigerian lecturer is three hundred and thirty three naira in a month. And so these are some of the things that uh, will make some of them, when they find a little opportunity, they go away. And the government should be able to patronize Nigerian research centers. There are a lot of things that can be done by Nigerian researchers, but it's like the government of going outside the country, get something yeah. that we can do it within our country. The government should be able to patronize our engineers. They are right. People are ready to assist the government in so many things. That, that right, Nicholas, your point is made. Uh, could you just quickly wrap off, wrap, uh, wrap on your on your thoughts quickly because of our time? Okay. Uh, yeah, the government should look into the educational sector critically to see that it gets revived so that we can have the best that we, we are supposed to have as a nation at six. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Um, I think we're having issues with others joining on the, um, on the Zoom link, those that are invited. But Harry is, is also there, but he said he's having issues turning on his video. Uh, but Harry, could you turn on your microphone and let's see whether we can hear you.
Good evening. Can you hear me, please? Yes, Sultan. Good evening, sir. It's nice talking I'll to you. To. I've been I'll waiting for this day to chat with you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for the job you are doing on journalists and guard, because the truth is bitter, but you stay by the truth. May God bless you. Regarding uh, Nigeria as 63, let me talk about the issue on security. It's true, no yeah. country, every country has their own side of their story. When, if you remember vividly, when uh, Joris Bonsi came to Nigeria, the former P uh, Prime Minister of UK, he said that they too have their own uh, shares of banditry, that even Nigeria, banditry in Nigeria is more lesser compared to those days when UK has their own challenge on banditry, but they overcome it. However, I live in Spain, Madrid, when every citizen have an ID, have, have, you, without have an house address, without that, the police, they don't recognize you. That is what I want you to please, the message itself. You should champion it. If we are walking on the street, like that police, they will just carry, they will just be asking you questions. But no, yeah, when when police control you, the first thing that we ask, where is your ID card? They will make a radio to confirm. If actually you are you are not in legal citizen, you have address, you have that is how they can that is how they they were able to capture most of us in Europe. But in Nigeria police, they'll just call you on the street. The next thing, open your car, do this. Without first of all, they're supposed to ask you your ID, your NIL, your NIL. Then they will radio their office to confirm if actually. You, your your system you have their system you have the, their their information in the in the system so but yes. I, I wanted to champion that that's what nigeria is lacking because when we when you were able to have the house address somebody is staying and you have your id when the police control mm -hmm. you on the street just they just need to just call their office their headquarters or their uh branches and confirm actually if you are illegal in the country or you don't have any crime with that yeah. way, we will be able to solve the the issue. Regarding the health care uh, issue, in year two, we don't go to a general hospital. The teaching hospital, we don't, people normally run to in, uh, in Nigeria. First of all, when you have a health challenge, what you would do, you will go to your health center. Then the, your doctor, your physical doctor with your ID card, we have what we call hospital card. Your doctor will, will tell you that go after he checked you, if it's something that is on they are unable, or they are, uh, it's more than them. That is when they yeah. will refer you to a teaching hospital. But right, Nigeria is not so. They will just be going to the teaching hospital. No, they will not attend to you except emergency. First of all, when you have a or your, your leg is your point is made. what do you do? You go to the nearest uh, uh, health center, which you, they will you attach you to a doctor. Not that you see any doctor. You have every citizens have their own doctor is in your heart will go and uh, Harris, your point is made can you hear me Harris? so i want you to sharpen that too thank you right, very thank much, you very I much will. thank you i will we need to we need that uh in our country mm. we need to be able to profile people properly a lot of non-nigerians are coming to nigeria yeah. to kill our people a lot of the so-called fulanese that are killing our people mm. they are not even nigerian fulanese they are from mauritania they are from uh, Niger, they are from uh, uh, even uh, Mali. So it has to change. We have to do our best to protect our people better. That's right. Yeah, so Biko, uh, because of our time, we need to change tack. Uh, so we talk about the um, issue of um, the article, you know, bent on, you know, exposing, you know, so-called exposure. I mean, exposing the president, uh, Bola Tinobu, in terms of his certificate. You know, the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar held a uh, press conference stating that he won't back down on his quest to fault Tinubu's academic record. But the question I would like to ask is, why do you think uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar is comfortable with voyaging on a wild goose chase? Well, um, he has his reasons. Um, and you know, politicians are by nature very optimistic. I think that somehow his lawyers have convinced him that the Supreme Court can still entertain 
fresh evidence and that um, if they were entertain fresh evidence then he could get president Tinobu disqualified the truth is there's really not much that we can do by way of convincing Atiku that look a matter that you did not bring up during the trial at the lower tribunal you cannot bring it up in the final court and issues like um, uh, criminal matter proving forgery and all that will require that the Nigerian court will bring um, the witness. The witness in this case will be the registrar of the Chicago State University to prove that the um, that the certificate that Ashwa Jubala met in a book presented to INEC is fake. The school has already come out to say, look, this person is our student. He graduated from our school with high honors. He's not a woman. The person that we gave, a, a, what was it called, that we, we actually gave admission to is a man. All of the uh, banter and the noise being made about the fact that F was written against his name. Uh, that he probably was using um, the identity of a woman. It's all rubbish. They have come out to say, look, this person is a man. The man we gave up uh, admission to is the man uh, who is the president of Nigeria. But the school was mandated to release the transcript because Atiku, the uh, lawyer, told the court that they needed the, those documents to be released to them before October 5 so that they can uh, uh, file those documents with the Supreme Court. But the law does not permit the Supreme Court to receive fresh evidence, especially in electoral matters. Electoral matters are by nature ceteris generis. They are peculiar in nature. They still out of time, for example, you get disqualified. If you didn't file on time, it will it is assumed that uh, you have abandoned the case. It happened to the It was based on technicalities that the APC candidate was able to win by split decision. It was based on technicalities. So for me, I refresh it because why didn't you uh, simply um, I filed it at that time. Throughout Atiku's case at the Presidential Election Petitions Court, the school, CSU, was not mentioned. How do you then bring it up in, in the final court? That's not how the way 
the the uh, law operates. So that's why many people believe that it's wasting its time. He has to prove that that document is fake. In the five-hour deposition that uh, that the registrar of uh, CSU uh, made, there was nowhere he referred to the document. I mean, the certificate as fake or forged. The only thing he said was that the certificate didn't emanate from the school. But it is also the tradition in the U.S. for third party elements, for vendors to print certificates uh, for people. The, in the U.S., they really do not value uh, certificates that much. They don't place so much accent on them. They place so much accent on transcripts. And many employers of labor will give you employment in the U.S., based on the transcripts that you have uh, uh, that uh, they have at their disposal not necessarily uh, because of the certificate that you are carrying in fact uh, the school described those diploma certificates as um, as a ceremonial a ceremonial in nature you know so many students don't even pick them they don't go to pick them they don't go to pick them at all because they are happy to use the transcripts to work and know that Tinobu's uh, employment in the U.S. was based on his transcript that his employer saw um, and, and they proved that he's a smart student. So this is, um, I think, article wants to damage the president as much as he can. Um, he knows that this is his last chance. And as far as he's concerned, if he cannot be president, then this man too should not be president because he is convinced that the president is crooked and that the president has to go. So naturally, there was no need for that press conference. Since you have decided to go to court, why calling the press conference to talk about a matter that you have filed? I think that... Uh, he also wanted uh, to uh, sway the opinion of Nigeria because many people felt that that deposition made by the uh, Chicago State University official favored the, the, the president because he, he said clearly that yes, this is this person attended our school. They also said that the funds on the um, certificate that Ashwaju presented to INEC looked like uh, the funds on this, the certificate that they issued to other students who did not collect uh, theirs. But at no time did they say that this, the certificate was fake or that it was forged. Uh, to prove forgery, you have to bring the principal of a school or the registrar or the VC to actually look at the certificate and say this certificate is fake. Uh, but people are holding on to the fact that the university said the certificate did not emanate from them. Of course, the, the certificate did not emanate from them because the one that emanated from them was the one that issued in 1979, which had already been picked up. So there's no way they will say a certificate that a vendor printed emanated from them. So that was what they meant. Well, that was what the official meant when he said it didn't emanate from us. You do not expect them to lie against themselves. If the certificate emanated from a vendor, why should anyone expect the school to, to then say, oh, it came from us? No. So, but that's what uh, the president's traducers are holding on to, that the school has already um, rejected the certificate, the school has disowned the certificate. We saw worse things than this when they were trying to pin um, 
money laundering and uh, drug trafficking on him because of a civil forfeiture. A civil forfeiture is not criminal forfeiture. He was not taken before a court. He was not convicted. So you cannot call that one a conviction. Somebody who was not charged, who was not taken before a court. But before the election, we saw, um, uh, before the inauguration, so much noise was made about this, believing that they could use it to disqualify the president. So what we have seen in, in the recent past is attempt by people competed against the president for the presidency to get him disqualified. They wanted to get him disqualified over so-called double nomination of his uh, deputy. It didn't work on the 28th of uh, May uh, this year. The Supreme Court ruled that Shetima was not guilty of uh, uh, double nomination. So the attempt to have him disqualified failed. No one knows what the Supreme Court will decide. But we must trust the judiciary that even on this matter, they will do what is right. As I've said, I am not a politician. I want the best for our country. And I trust the judiciary that even on this matter, they will do what is best for their country, for their country, for our country. Maybe what is best is to grant us articles prayers. It's up to the judges to decide. If the judges decide that no, it is too late to bring fresh evidence. And the Supreme Court by nature does not even ha have a witness box because they don't take evidence at that stage. They only review what transpired at the lower tribunal. But if the Supreme Court decides to use its discretion to say they want to look, uh, they want to have a look at that fresh evidence, fine. Right. I believe that the judges of the Supreme Court will do what is right, what is best uh, for their country. Yeah. I believe that they will decide the matter in a manner that shows um, that is consistent with the law of our land. Absolutely. So, looking forward, uh, by December 6, the Supreme Court will have given its verdict. So, this is not a, a, a waiting game that is as long as that of the uh, appeal court. So, mm. we are happy to wait just for <laughs> roughly one and a half months. Mm. Right, um, quite interesting. We'll see how the whole thing pans out. Um, we're having some of our panelists who, we, whom, to whom we send the uh, links, uh, the links, but then they're having issues joining. But the two people that we have who have been loyal to uh, staying on this call have been Nicholas Gukup uh, and Harris. Uh, so, Nicholas, let me come to you, uh, one of our panelists on, on the show today. Uh, what do you have to say? to this last topic of ours very quickly uh, nicholas unmute okay can you hear me carry on yeah i have to be loyal i've been following baba jide for more than 10 years but if it is five o'clock and my wife did not see me, she will ask me, would I come and listen mm -hmm. to journalists hang out? What, uh, uh, what I will say is that I is just in form of a question. Since the case is in court, I would like to ask Baba Jide because we have a lot of issues, a lot of uh, judgment from our electoral tribunal that are based on uh, things that one cannot even say affects the election. Please, Baba Jide. Don't you think that our tribunal should be using their judgment based on numbers rather than other things like uh, maybe domination, certificates, or whatever? Don't you think we should be basing our judgment based on the number, the votes that have been cast in the election? You mean, Please, I need your you mean to, uh, you mean for them not to use um, technicalities, have you? Yes, sir. I, I think that's the right thing. If you look at what happened in Nasarawa, you see what the tribunal did. The tribunal just uh, subtracted and added. 
And the tribunal was convinced that the candidate of the PDP was the winner of the election by even more than 60,000 um, votes. If we look at the dissenting judgment, the dissenting judgment that favored the APC, um, it was about 3,000 votes or so, you know. So I think the tribunal in Asrawa tried to do that, simply look at the figures, look at in their judgment who has won, who didn't win. I think that is the right way to go. I'm not saying that that judgment will be validated at the level of appeal uh, at the Supreme Court. You never can tell. Uh, but mm. I think whatever will give victory to the person who deserves it, no matter the party, that is what we want to see. Because that is what will cement the future of democracy in our country. We don't want people who do not deserve to win an election using the courts to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. We don't want that at all. It makes no sense. It's, it's, it's barbaric for people to vote for someone. The person won the election. You now use the courts to collect the victory from him. It's, it's ungodly. And people who allow this to happen. I can assure them that in the hereafter, they are going to suffer for such a glaring injustice. So, and for democracy, and democracy is a game of numbers, just as you said, and that is what should prevail. Uh, interesting. Um, good, good contribution, Nicholas. And thank you so much, Bikio, for providing um, response to that. Harris, I think you've been on mute. You're still on this call. Very quickly, um, let's get your contribution or your question. Very quickly. Okay. The Mestre himself. What I want to contribute is, it's quite unfortunate that Atiku is going to this length. This is a man that when Sherry was wedding, doing, who tried to wed, he, he brought you in as the, as the father of that occasion. To show the, it's just, to me, it's just quite unfortunate that um, he's going to the extent to find out. He's only a simple person that will see a Jagaban and say this man is not educated. Never in my life, just as you say in Jola this Sargat, how can I go and forge my certificate for a school I went to? It's just a simple logic. What, what I'm just trying to say, just a personal hatred, and he thought that this is his last chance that he could contend. Yes. It's, it's, quite, it's quite unfortunate, Babajide, that, uh, that mm. I'm sorry to mention somebody's name here on Arise TV. I don't know why they are taking that thing personal. This is not personal. That Hossein, Hossein is being personal as if... Uh, you want a, you cannot force Obi to enter uh, election. Harry, Obi did not Harry, Harry, oh, Harry, can you hear me? It's not personal, it's not Harry, can you hear me? I'm Harry, to mention no. the all right, Harry, your point is made. Your point is, very... your point is made, Harry. Mm. I, I think it's better we just um, ah. stay on on the issues. You know, there's no need mentioning you know other journalists and all of that. People are entitled to their opinion. You just make your point. We would mm. like to allow you to land up on your you point. Never... Without having to you will never hear me system. mention their name. In fact, I will be diminishing myself mm. uh, to be mentioning names of uh, a journalist that is uh, by far my junior in age and in the profession. No support. Th th that's right. Because of our time, we, we need to call it a wrap. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we're, we're not able to have um, the three other people who received the invite, um, who received the Zoom invite to join this program, uh, they were not able to join the call. Uh, but the two... What, what, what this means, Ibrahim, what this means, what this means is that we have to do this a lot mm. more. We have to make it um, as interactive right. as possible. Let's, let's uh, do this again uh, so that uh, our viewers can take advantage and um, interface with us uh, directly the way uh, they've done today. I think... That that would be good. Absolutely, it's very interesting. I, I enjoyed it myself. Mm. I enjoyed it myself, and and that really you mm. know add, added more color to uh, the program. So we can far. build on that. We can build Absolutely on that. Absolutely, be killed. Absolutely, be killed. Uh, so, your final thoughts, you know, as regards um, what we discussed so far, as we call it a wrap, be killed. Well, I wish Atiku good luck. Uh, it's not easy to be a serial election loser. Uh, to be almost like uh, the um, Abraham Lincoln of Nigerian politics, 
The only difference is that Abraham Lincoln, after several failures, eventually became president. I think I took it chasing his record. I wish him good luck, this desire to destroy his friend, stab his friend, and irreparably damage his friend's image. But I also wish the Supreme Court luck, good luck. I wish them uh, Godspeed as they adjudicate on this matter and do the best best for our country. Ibrahim will do this again next week. Happy married life. Uh, hope you are beginning to enjoy my down. Huh? <laughs> At least you've seen Absolutely. what the rest of us are enjoying. Your, your cheeks <laughs> will become uh, bigger now and uh, uh, you will become more rotund. You will become more rotund. If you are not careful, you will even be more rotund than me. That's what marriage brings. That rest of mind, that support. What you used to do by yourself, someone someone is there to help you do it. Absolutely. Women are very supportive. So some of the energy that you, you normally will spend mm. uh, doing household work for yourself, you'll be able to spare that uh, energy and save it for the other room. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think um, that's a beautiful advice coming from the ancestor. And the maestro himself in on all fronts <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much and that's our program uh on uh, thanks our, that's our program you can see the program again anytime by subscribing to our youtube channel tvc news nigeria click on the subscribe button to get list, latest information you can also follow us on our social media platforms at tvc news ng i'm also at ibrahim tvc news on behalf of the rest of the team i'm ibrahim shita see you again next edition bye for now <laughs>